2023 general elections in view, sustenance and decorum in governance and politicking. Sustainability is a political choice, not a technical one. It is not a question of whether we can be sustainable, but whether we choose to be sustainable. And that's by Gary Lawrence, an American opinion poll star. Transparency, fairness, and healthy competition are the elements of good governance. But every electoral session in Nigeria has shown the reverse. But recently, cases of hate speech and derogatory comments from presidential candidates have been the hallmark of campaign rallies. Mm. This show of disregard for the candidates reflects the deteriorating state of things, the lack of decorum from the candidates. This lack of character is a pointer to what lies ahead if such individual become president or hold any office of importance. Furthermore, strategy and sustainable thinking are an integral part of governance. Both the tactless approach of these leaders has been proven by rash and unthinkable decisions made by some stakeholders. Recently, in tackling socio-economic issues in their states, which will eventually lead to productivity and downturn and more chaos. In creating sustainability, there is a need to utilize scalability in identifying reasonable strategies that can be tailored to a particular need, but given bad politicking and corrupt conditions of quasi-democracy in this country, these leadership qualities are overlooked. Leaders who understand the rudiment of true sportsmanship are the best fit. But sadly, the most we are left with are folks who have zero empathy and understanding of how democracy will work. Now, let me engage my fellow advocates on some of these issues from um, recent electoral violence. Let me start with Suleiman. Uh, you've heard of the recent killing of um, the um, Mrs. Victoria Ch is it Ch Chitex? Yeah, in the Labour Party woman leader in, in Kaduna State. I think that happened. Was it earlier this week or last week? Uh, electoral violence and the rest. Mm, yeah. What can you say about this, Solomon? Electoral violence, attack on political candidates like the attack on the PDP gubernatorial candidate in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. Same for APC gubernatorial candidate in, um, in Oshun o o o o o State. No, Ogun State. No, Oyo State, not it's Oyo State. And then the attack on the the flag boys in Oshodi carrying the Labour Party. You see, no, no, no political party is immune to attack. So, so Limon, what can you say about these things? Yeah, that is um, what I was saying earlier. One thing is this. We must remember one fact for sure. Politics is a game of emotion for most people. And only few people play with the fact that they see it as a game of you win some, you lose some. So that is why, and how does this happen? Uh, people have challenged um, a candidate to talk to their followers. And I tell, the, tell people that there is an exchange. Candidates could also go in talking to their followers. They have done that several. You can see most of the front runners are saying that, oh, they are not for violent, it's violent. That. that is why each and every one of us, even our political actors, INEC is doing their part, civil societies are also doing their part. One thing we must remember is this look at the what happened in Kaduna, as rightly said. The woman, she is a woman leader in a world living a peaceful life, among other things. When, we kill, when one person is killed in cases like this, a whole generation is being wiped off. And what we were having now is that we were having a carryover of issues of resentment. I told you already, if you look at the mood and the atmosphere of the country, it is tensed already. So we don't even need anything to make it more tense as if we have we have it now. So one thing is this, all actors, religion leaders, political actors, they must start by doing this. And another thing, good thing is that, you remember the peace accord, ably led by the former head of state, uh, General Abisalami Abubakar. What that committee even said to achieve is that all politicians, that all presidential candidates must come together and sign a peace accord, saying that whatever the outcome of the election, they will accept it. That, uh, so as a people, as politicians, as supporters of this candidate, one thing must put at heart is that, oh, I, I asked one thing the other time, you should always ask this question as a voters or supporters of any of these candidates. Ask yourself this question, what if my candidate lose this election? That is the question you should start asking. 
if your candidate loses the election, will you take it as the will of people that, okay, the ambition of my candidate or the ambition of the candidate itself is not bigger than the nation as a whole? So political violence is something we need to work on. And we should understand that, most especially, I told you the right time, we have a new demography that, that are coming in. Some of them were not even old enough in 1999 to see what the military rule could be like and what democracy is like now. Then we have the Gen Z generation. And for the Gen Z generation, apologies, they, are, they, they have the medium, they have the platform to, uh, to, um, to hear their opinion. So this must also be guided so that we don't uh, eat up the polity. Another thing you also look at is that we're in the era of fake news. We must also uh, don't allow fake news to spread. Something will happen, people will just make it, uh, blow it out of proportion before you know a lot of violence here and there. So these are things we need to look Thank at. Media houses, political actors, true. civil society group, and as individuals, in Thank our you. own little ways, we must make sure that yeah, the quality is not being eaten more than it is now. Thank you very much, Suleiman. I really love your deep thought and insight to this. Indeed, made you sue of the political matter, Victor Achintes, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, how important is the utterances of political candidates? Victor, you said some things about responses and dominion, disposition of political candidates. You know, certain political candidate denigrating another political candidate mm -hmm. is common. You know the person I'm referring to, even we will not mention his name, but you know it's it's common, not just him, even some other party members too from other parties, a spokesperson, you know, attacking other people. It's not necessary. So what what, what can you say about this? You no, know, what's what's your advice to you know political candidates and their followers addressing people in public spaces with decorum, yeah. Well, you know, um I'm not going to be on national TV to be advising people that I believe they should pretty much uh, have an understanding of, you know, fundamental things. And <clears throat> you don't advise behavior, right? It can only be corrected, okay? And that is a deep reflection, right, of behavioral pattern, right, of the quality of their thinking. Because why should we move from debating issues to debating people? You know, this person said this, this person did that. Oh, that one that said he's doing this, is this what we're going to, you know? So that's really not why we're here. And that's why uh, the, I, I pretty much, and I must pretty much give it to um, Mr. Peter Ruby in terms of bringing in some bit of quality into the conversation. And we, we just have to say, we just have to be very, it's, I'm not trying to be affiliated to any party. Like we said earlier, it's a win for Nigeria. And it's super important for us to raise the bar in terms of the quality of conversation. I mean, electoral period is one of the most critical things happening now is conversations, right? You go to newspaper stand, it's conversations. You go to the market, women, it's conversation. You know, you, I mean, everybody's having pockets of conversation. But what is the quality of those conversations? And we must begin to raise our level of thinking so that what comes out from us will be up there. I mean, when you look at the, the U.S. elections and, you know, the Democrats, the Republicans, I mean, the quality of conversation, it's, it's high up there, right? So, again, you can't give what you don't have. So, it's because, again, if you put, when you also put your ear to the ground and listen to some of our young people, the quality of conversation, it's, it's poor. Right, so and that's why the whole this whole tantrums. I mean, tantrums is not something that is avoidable in politics, right? But there are levels to it. We must leave people and debate critical issues. Oh, what have you done in your eight years in government? Let's debate the issue, let's not debate the person. So, this is not the time for political aspirants to throw tantrums at people. This is the time to begin to take issues head on. And debate issues. Well, thank you very much. You you kind of commended Peter B's response to issues. Same too, I also commend the PDP candidate too. The little time you see him speak, you don't see him attacking persons just mm. like Peter B. They will attack the issue. Mm. So I hope other candidates will learn from this candidate that you don't spend your time denig de um, denigrating, denigrating people. other people True or that. talking down on other candidates. You are not better than them. 
you guys are having the same equal opportunity convince us why you want to be president don't spend your time saying things that are not relevant and talking down to people so um mr sage i'm going yeah. to ask you what's your opinion on blockage of access to public spaces for campaigning you know what is happening in some states now you see but, but, some but you're, some you're, political you're, opponents you're misunderstanding the situation okay mm. we don't have states we have fifth down we have what uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> we, we, the point is this is the point is you you, you this is wrong <laughs> okay. I own this place. You can come here. Oh, mm. so I mean, so the wide, wide west. <laughs> Are we in the wide, wide west? It's actually something like that. Oh, you know, it's very so, unfortunate. So, yes, what's going on? Some people own this place. They paid for it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they've earned it. They own it. You can't just and in court too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't just walk in and say, you know, they decide what goes on here. So I'm sorry, you can't use. But but it's not a good thing, use, right? You, well, you can't use the thing that I've already bought. You know, I mean, this thing you have bought is not something you should be able to have bought in the first instance. But you have decided that it is yours. You know, and so this was. Well, I'm trying to make you see the the their mindset, the futility, exactly, the futility of doing political business in this country. It is insane because the same people who want to come here and use this place also own some other place somewhere. Exactly. You see, so this is what it is we have. We have fiefdoms. This country has been carved. We're not educated enough to understand what it is we have. You know, I was listening to some Hausa brothers some days ago and they were saying, they said, look at him working Gwangkoso. You know, and I wanted to stop. But what, what they were saying, during the reign of Gwangkoso in Kano, I actually wanted to stop them and tell them, no, no. Gwangkoso wasn't reigning over you. He was serving you. Yeah. But you know, but we don't get it. So uh, we think political office means leadership. It means, it means rulership. rulership. It is mm. to a point, but it is not necessarily mm -hmm. that. So the whole this is, this is structural, <laughs> you know, disfiguration of how things are meant to be and how things are, you know. So when you say that, my thought is, Somebody owns here, so I mean, you can't come in. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just before I go back to you, Suleiman, I want to ask these two gentlemen here, what's your view on um, these G5 governors? You know, we have a certain, uh, you know, you said, I'm just alluding to what you said, that uh, the opposition is, the opposition ha seem to have his house divi divided. It's broken. You now have a, G a set of governors that call them, that is, uh, is it River State, Oyo State, what again, Enugu State, which other state again? I think there are five of them. Benway. Benway and which, can you remember the last state? I think one northern state or so. Or your state. I think no, that's no, what you mentioned. Your... Okay, um, if we remember the last one. Now, this, this set of governors, they call themselves the G5 governors <laughs> in PDP. And now they say, okay, they are not just G5 governors alone because they have other persons of interest in the group. People like uh, Ayo Deli the former governor of Egypt State. People like, uh, I think Chief Bodhi George is part of them. Now, they are now calling themselves the integrity group. Oh, my now, God. Now, do you think they are actually standing for fairness and justice with respect to their party representation of every member or are they actually going to be like a caterpillar Pers not a pillar personally for this 2023 election by appending integrity to them to their group you know has just defeated i just realized that there's really nothing to talk about because apparently you know, i don't think there's any integrity in nigerian politics there's really basically none of it but their their complaints are valid now they are their complaint, what they're asking for is valid. You know, if you're in a party, you know, you should step out of the party, step back from the party. That's integrity. You know, integrity is not foiling, you know, just being in a house and then pulling it apart. Pulling it down. You know, so that's not integrity. That's where you sell tantrums. That's, that's immature behavior. You know, so my thought is if you think you have integrity, you step back, you step down, you say, no, I, I can't deal with this. You know, you show your integrity. No, but say, you know what, I didn't get it, I'm going to scatter it. I don't understand what's going on, honestly. Okay, what about you, Victor? I, I, I'm pretty much going to tear to say it, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, because everything has an agenda. What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the motive? You know, there's just a lot of ulterior motive, you know, with everything happening, mm -hmm. right? And it's a fundamental problem, right? So integrity is key, and I mean, if you have it, so... So, again, I'm just going to tilt towards what Sami has said. He's capped it all, and I'm standing with him. Okay. Now, um, Suleiman, we'll round up with you now. This uh, issue of sustenance in governance. You see this mad rush 
of final moment action by some political or some from for some governors let me use them um, the outgoing governor of uh, uh, the former gov immediate past governor of uh, ocean state mm -hmm. right you know the, he, emp he employed over twelve thousand persons right i'm wondering why did you wait to the last minute you did that and then the new governor jackson Ad adeleke had to fire them and say this is not sustainable and then same in wiki river states where he appointed over fifty thousand is it assistance and yeah. I asked to want to what need is that when you are even leaving office, are creating is this not like creating a problem for the next administration? That's so well, let's back to sustenance. What do you think about this? Are they just exercise, um, exercising their goodwill, or their their actions are politically minded, uh, politically motivated rather? Yeah. While uh, this uh, decision is um, has political implication for the next government that is coming in. At the same time, too, you see, there's a lot of, uh, most of these decisions are shrouded in a lot of uh, politics on, on that side. And I think one of the unfortunate things that happened in uh, Oshun State was that I think there is no even a transition committee. That is, the, the coming government did not even know where to start from. They just started whatever they meet on ground. They start um, with it. And Oshun, as it is today, it's um as a it's very unfortunate because they still have a case in the court. So the essence now is that whatever Governor Adele K will do from now to whatever happened in the election, um, in the tribunal down to to the to the Supreme Court. So we pray that that same thing is not being reversed again. And that's one thing we should do as a people and as a nation. We must start building this country around institutions, not around people. That is what you get when you build policy around people. That is, the next person will just come in and say, oh, you are going, oh, you are fired. I get it. So what we need to now do, we should start building things that if you are employing, you employ because um, the state government workforce need it. If you are also installing people, you do that because there is a need for that. But when you do this out of political um, view, among other things, we're only creating problem for the governors that is coming in. And the government that also comes in should also look at it, look at the merit of the appointment. If it has merit, we should not just throw it away because we don't like the face of whoever must have do that. So, in essence, my own idea is this. If we can build our policy around institutions, there won't be need for any human interference, even if you either you like the face of whoever did it or not. So that's my take. Thank you very much, Suleiman. What you said is very important. Build institutions, not humans. Not making humans stronger than the persons stronger than the institutions. Because government should be of laws rather than of men. Institutions will outlive any human. Thank you very much. So, and the other, other thing I'm going to say is that uh, for our, to our political candidates, uh, when you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. This is from a sage, Richmond Dyer Johnson of Blessed Memory. So, Baba Tenubu, Baba Atiku, Pito B, and Kwa Kwansu, who really are you? Speak and tell us who you are. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocates. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platform. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with the previous brokers go to prosivafrica.com forward slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa till next week same time on this station let's keep advocating for a better society bye for now <laughs>